My name is Angel Catone. I'm the Mixed Media Art Instructor here at the Iontown Art Center. We had so much fun last year at Hashtag Macomb Reads, and we're so happy to be a part of it this year in this uh, virtual uh, simulation. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is make stickers. I make all kinds of stickers, and you can find a, one of my videos on the Anton Art Center's uh, website where I give you a tutorial on how you can make stickers that you can put on your notebooks, your uh, water, water, water bottles, and pens, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, today we're going to be making a special type of stickers called book plates. Uh, book plates are special stickers that you uh, can put in your books, in your favorite books. Uh, this, this one I made can see that. Uh, and I put in my favorite Norse mythology book. Uh, I do this all the time with all my favorite books. And uh, book plates themselves are these special types of brands or family crests that people would put in their personal libraries so that people would know that these books belonged to them. And so that when they were borrowing books from other houses, they would know that uh, where to return them to. Uh, book plates normally have nice artwork on them, and the Latin phrase ex libris, and followed by the, um, the owner's name, uh, ex libris is the, means from the library of or from the books of, and that's why the person would have their name, so it was kind of like a title. <laughs> um, book plates were very popular in the 80, 1800s, and people would get custom designs and fill all of their books with them. So normally these are print, printed, but today we're going to make our own special kind using, um, using sticker paper, uh, pencils, colored pencils, and markers. So if you want to follow along, follow along right now, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to make a beautiful fall birch scene. But of course, these are personalized book plates. So feel free to go completely creative with all the other uh, sticker paper that you have. So starting off, you're going to need your paper. And just using one of these squares, you want to go long ways so it's, it's taller than it is shorter. So to start off, you want to use one of the squares and put a little a box inside of the square. This is where you're going to put your ex libris and your name. So just make a small rectangle within one of your squares. All right. After that, in all the four corners, we're going to have leaves. So to do that, you just want to go ahead and draw some circles. These circles are going to be our base bases. And you can put more than four. I'm actually going to be putting two in each corner. And feel free to make them overlap because we're going to be going over those in a minute. All right. After that, you want to put a line through all of your circles. This is going to be the stem and the vein line. And they can be going whatever direction you want. So after you have your stem line, you're going you're gonna to sharpen up the, the one side of it. You sh I made my stem lines uh, all extend out of one end. So I'm using the opposite end as the top of my leaf. So just add a point to that end, to all of your leaves. After you've added a point, you're going to want to go back through on the opposite side and add a little bit of a heart shape on the tip bisected by the line so that it looks a little bit more leaf-like. It's not just a perfect circle. Leaves aren't just perfect circles in nature. So it kind of looks like a heart right now. after you have all of your leaves, leaf shapes done, you want to go back in 
erase any extra lines in between from other circles or so. You always want to start with pencil because it gives you the opportunity to correct or change anything you don't like. And then after that, you want to add the veins to your leaves to make them a little bit more leaf-like, which are just lines, branching lines. And then from that point, you want to add a little bit more detail to your stem. So just add a triangle shape to the end of, your, of, of the line you created for your stem. So you just want to continue to make sure that all your leaves have stems. Or fix all your leaf stems and add veins to their leaves. So at this point, you should have four or, four or more leaves in each corner, and they should all have triangle stems on top and veins within the leaves. So from that point, we want to add the birch trees. So birch trees are these lovely white trees with these amazing like zebra stripes. So they're very easy to draw. They're pretty straight and narrow. So for our trees, we can just add some straight lines, some parallel lines to make the tree itself. I am putting these lines at an angle so it looks like this forest is a little tilted. So I'm adding three trees right now and they're all going different directions. And then I'm adding smaller uh, thin parallel lines for the branches, mimicking the erratic shapes of the original trees I drew. And I'm just covering up most of the space, but I'm still leaving some white space. So you should have, you should be at this step where you can see these lines going behind your leaves. From there, I'm going to be drawing stripes across the birch trees to make, to give them their iconic, uh, beautiful zebra stripes. Oh. So just draw lines across. Uh, I would try and make these lines multiple sizes and maybe some closer to others than, other, than uh, others, make some further away because these stripes aren't a clear pattern. Some of them I'm tilting because this isn't a uniform pattern. And between my uh, trees that I drew, I'm making them have different uh, numbers, number of stripes, so that they don't look like the same tree over and over again. So from there, you should have lovely striped trees. They kind of remind me of the Dr. Seuss uh, trees from the uh, Wunzler. <laughs> All right, from there, <coughs> I'm gonna add stripes to our background. So we're gonna be leaving the trees white and coloring our leaves beautiful fall colors, but because we leave our trees white, we don't wanna have our background also white. So I'm just gonna be taking my pencils and adding stripes all the way in the background so that our trees pop more because our background is dark, but our trees are beautiful white and then the leaves are an amazing fall colors. So any space that is not tree, I'm, I'm penciling in and you can use marker for this nice and dark, making sure to leave any uh, trees and leaves white for now. So this is what you should have right now. From this point, I would recommend taking a marker 
and going over your lines so you can see them better. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this for my trees so they have a bit of a better outline. And I'm just going over my pencil marks. But if you like your pencil marks, go ahead and keep them. And I'm also going over my leaves to give them a bit of a bold outline so that the trees don't overpower the leaves design. I want them to have equal weight in our picture, but the background doesn't matter as much, so I'm leaving it only pencil. I should mention that it's okay if you go past the lines because you won't really see that you accidentally made a mistake. So it's all good. It's always good. Not to mention ma mistakes make it personalized. So, all right. From there, I'm also going to outline the box so I know, so I can see a clear border. All right, so you should be at this step where your trees and leaves are outlined and your background is left in pencil unless you didn't want that. All right, this is our final step. We're going to take some colored pencils or crayons or markers, whatever you like, and go ahead and color our leaves. I'm going to be doing a gradient with my leaves, so I'm going to choose two to three colors. So for my first leaves, I'm going to choose the iconic yellow, orange, red for my leaf. And I'm going to start with red on the top darkly and then go lighter, lightly press as I go and then switch to my next color, orange, slightly dark and then lighter as I go and then switch to, switch to yellow, pressing hard and then going lighter. And then if I feel one color is being lost in the gradient, I go back with my orange and help it going lighter as I go down the leaf to create a gradient. Then I want to sharpen up my red a little bit, going lighter as I go down the leaf. And then I'm going to continue this for all of my other leaves, switching colors if I want. So your leaves should have a notice, notice, noticeable, noticeable change from red to your other colors. Uh, so I did red, orange, yellow. And you don't have to make these all gradients or use all three colors at the same time. Like for this leaf, I'm only doing red and maybe orange. So I go lighter as I go down. or this one is going to be starting with a yellow and switching off to this orange. This one's just going to be a nice dark red, but 
as I go down the leaf, I'm going to lighten up my pre the pressure I put on my colored pencil so it still has a gradient because this, this end is darker than this end. And I'll do the same with this leaf up here where it's just yellow, but I'm going to lighten up my touch as I go down. And this one I'm going to use all my colors again, but I'm going to start with orange, then go to a red, then end with a yellow. So when you're done, you should have some beautiful uh, fall colored leaves, some beautiful white, white birch trees, and a nice dark background. And from there, you can add your name and Ex Libris so that you can add this to your favorite book and everyone will know that this book belongs to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a good time and that we see you soon.